On the last episode of What We Know, we talked about a new mouse pad, voice actors, a shortened version of the AMA. Man, that AMA took forever for me to cut down, so much so that I was forced to include the content that was meant for that video into this one. So here we go. Stop comparing Rainbow Six Siege to Ready or Not because that is a gross misrepresentation of what Ron is about. Thank you and have a good day. Talk, this is Entry Team. It looks like we have a subject to discuss. Copy, Entry Team. Continue with discussion. So I thought that I would just go down the list of things to look at, starting with YouTube. Now to be honest, Void isn't very active when it comes to their YouTube channel, but they are very active on other channels, like Jack Frags, Prodigio P, Nox Cooperative, and your boy Durag. You know, at some point, they are going to give out free copies to certain YouTubers, but I'm not sure what meets their criteria. I would imagine Jack Frags and Pete being a shoe in to get copies, but a tiny guy like me probably won't have the luxury. I feel like Nox would be a wild card though, so maybe. There's also another way to get a free copy, and my understanding of it is that if you know one of the bigger YouTubers, you would also get put on the possible list of people to get a copy. But they were looking for big people like Jacksepticeye. I originally had a list of people that they were looking for, but unfortunately I ended up losing it. <laughs> Somehow. I also had a list of some YouTubers that were greenlit for the beta, but I also lost that too. Uh, but if I remember correctly, I believe it was Math Chief, Karma Cut, Blue Drake 42, Big Fry. And if I'm remembering that right, that's who was in it. But listen, uh, this was a while ago, so I'm not sure if anyone on this list is actually involved. In fact, I'm not, I'm not even sure if the source that gave it to me was actually, you know, correct. So yeah, uh, I don't know about the last part, but that's that's what the information that they gave to me, if I remember correctly. And that is all I have to say about YouTube. Let's push on to the next one, which is the official website. Is there anything that's new on the official website? Let's just reload it here. Nope, not really. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is Instagram. So one thing that I noticed about Instagram is that you can't really look at previous pictures that they have on like the circle right here, or maybe you can, and I'm just not sure where to find them. But um, but originally there was there was two pictures that showed up on Instagram when I was doing the AMA stream, and those were basically the mouse pads that I showed you on the that I showed you on the previous video. Uh, but really nothing of note for the Instagram. So let's push on to the next one which is Facebook. So they do have a new post, but it's basically of the AMA where it says to come ask us questions. And this basically takes you over to Reddit. So let's look at the next one here, which is Twitter. And there's really nothing of note on Twitter. It's just, you know, same old information, you know, nothing new there. And the last thing that I think that we're going to do is look at their Reddit. And man, there is a lot of Reddit responses, so get ready. So here we go. So we're going to be starting with Market Plan. What type of Market Plan is Ron going to have? I hope it's like more recent games like Siege and Fortnite. Oh my god. Where once the base game is launched, in-game credits can be earned to purchase further content. Buy more for less! Now it's hard to say if this will be implemented at all or not, but I hope there isn't going to be a paywall behind DLC and future content. If Void does this, the game will go downhill and worsen the player base by the second. I really can't believe what I'm hearing with this comment. Is it? Is this? So th this is this is AAA games now, right? Y you're paying more to get less. Is basically what he just argued for right there. Man, I remember the days of when you actually paid a good amount of money for a gigantic piece of DLC. Oh man, that was fucking amazing. What happened to those days, man? Now everybody's just like paying like fucking twenty dollars for like like what a skin, a skin. Like really? Oh my. God. And the developer replies with, For paid content, the idea is to go all out and release expansion packs with massive amount of content, not just one to two maps and a new character. 
Ooh, shout out to Rainbow Six Siege. We really want to take it to the next level when it comes to expanding on Ready or Not. It's highly unlikely we'll be allowing players to buy skins and the like with credits or points. Thank you. God, I love you, Void Interactive. The same goes with crates. Not happening. Yeah, no gambling. No gambling. It's much more a tradition method, but we all loved it back in the day. You're probably not going to grind to get an expansion pack set in an entirely different country, though. All that being said, we have plans for unpaid content as well. We love the amount of room that we have to grow when it comes to the setting in World of Ron. So fingers crossed we have the option to do so. Oh man, don't let EA hear that. <laughs> They'll be like, oh my god, no loot crates. So further down in the comments section, somebody had concerns with map citing Call of Duty where if you didn't have a certain map pack, it would ruin your game. And he proceeded to ask if they were going to add game modes from SWAT 4 and that they would get feedback from the clans and communities. Here's what the developer had to say. Yeah. We won't restrict players from playing maps they don't own. We're either going to allow you to do so if someone in your squad owns it, or you just play a lower resolution version, Arma 2 style. Absolutely interested in hearing what the community has to say about our modes, as well as letting them help shape a better experience. Regarding PvP, we don't want another point .45 situation, where some servers banned it because it was too OP, Swap4 had that. So we're moving on to the next one, which says, I've suggested this before, but wanted to simplify. A first responder mode, little to no weapons, kit, info, or backup. For extra difficulty, try playing as a regular officer. Being the first on the seed would add a whole new level to gameplay, and it's easier to add than most suggestions, since it limits what you spawn with. Some other options that'd be cool, choosing how many friendly AI spawn, so we could go in alone or maybe with an AI partner. Having only a light armor vest an officer would wear normally, being able to run and chase after suspects, choosing to not take any grenades or less lethals, being able to only bring a handgun, stuff like this. Limiting our equipment is great for difficulty. Imagine trying to stop a gas station shooting or a school shooting that we've seen but with only one lightly armored ai posing as your pistol car partner a body vest handgun and a taser it's a very real situation some people are unfortunate enough to experience it's terrifying just to be clear i'm not asking for patrol cars or backslash models to be made just asking for some extra options in the pre-mission setup us players love options and this would add so much to how a level could be played and replayed yeah and the developer replies with not likely we've got enough on our plate and the game is really focused on SWAT and SWAT alone cool suggestion maybe something someone can do with mods moving on to the next one we've got we gotta get some dystopian shit in here too probably through mods and then it just shows a picture of uh like i'm guessing this is some kind of military po uh, military police sort of deal which is kind of nuts you know it kind of scares the shit out of me when i see police officers dressing up with military gear it sounds like a police state to me let's hope that never happens let's see what the dev has to say about it and he just says, great link, thanks. Well, moving on to the next one. Let's go. So, which law enforcement units does Void plan on bringing into the game later? I'm definitely fine with only SWAT, but since you're bringing in units from around the globe after release, I'd be really curious to know which ones. Surely you must have some idea already. Also, do you plan on those being free or paid DLCs? And the developer replies with, if we told you right now, it would ruin a lot of the fun wouldn't it? Somebody replies to the developer saying, no need for specifics right now, but do you plan on doing units that have more outdoor long range focus? Thinking more of the military SF unit rather than SWAT unit. If we're going to expand to Europe and keep strictly within police, I'd hope for raid. France has seen a lot of terrorist attacks and it seems fairly relevant as they responded to a lot of the big ones. They also seem to do a good job in fairly crappy situations and it would be great to play as the French for a change. And the developer replies with, oi! Okay, at first I thought that that said oi, like, what? You know, but actually that says we, oui, uh, according to Google Translation, which means yes. So they're going to be adding in the French, which, you know, I had a feeling, but whatever. Further down in the comments section, we read, Fair enough, but I'm just gonna level with you. This looks like the game I've been waiting for a long time now. It's basically everything I wanted from a shooter, and I'd be very happy to support it. However, I'd be really fine with just having SWAT in it. As you said, you wanted to honor the work of brave police officers around the globe, and in no way glorify obnoxious and cowardly criminal acts. I just fear I'd support you, only for you to down the line implement a unit that would bear the name of the former, but perpetuate the actions of the latter. And the developer replies with, I'm not entirely sure what units you think we're going to add, but when we add a new unit, it will be appropriate and a relevant one. Moving on to the next one. Head tracking. Track IR. 
are. This isn't critical, obviously. Just as a sim fan, I always feel obligated to suggest it. It just adds a little bit of an extra immersion and situational awareness to take quick glance left or right, independent of where your weapon is pointing. And the developer replies with, We initially had track IR in our pre ron title, so it's possible. Moving on to the next one. The next one is called How Smart Is The AI? And essentially he talks about something that was already talked about on a dev blog, but the thing is, he wants to know if AI actually cheats. And this is what the developer says. We've expanded upon UE4's perception system to make an AI that has realistic hearing, sight, damage and touch senses and prioritizes its targets and positioning based on all its sensing information so you won't find any ai knowing where you are behind walls or any of the other nonsense i'll still post the questions but i really don't feel like reading that so uh you, you know you can just pause the video and just read it yourself because i'm fucking lazy i guess up next we have episodic type will ready or not's missions be episodic leading to a big twist or it's just random swap missions in a disorganized america and the developer replies with guess the twist Interesting, interesting. Up um, next we have Recoil and Ron. <laughs> it just shows a fucking, uh, uh, a YouTube video. <laughs> Let's see what the developer has to say. Developer says, more shit post, please. Lol, moving on to the next one. Up next we have, should helicopters be added to the game? Oh my god, this is a very long ass post. Holy shit. In some cases, helicopters are used for recon, surveillance, and dropping troops. It could make for a very interesting experience, but not all situations require helos. If they do add them, what are the game mechanics required for it to work? One, what kind of helicopters will be used? My personal preference, the AMH-6M Little Bird. And then he posts a video which I'm guessing is has to do with that, right? Oh, that's actually a website. Okay. Advantages. Smaller size. Carries three people on its side seats. Disadvantage. Troops are more likely to get hit sitting on the sides. Sikorowski UH-60 Blackhawk, which has another link that goes to a another website for helicopters interesting advantage carries 12 troops better survival rate disadvantage bigger size i imagine it's louder too one technology both little bird and black hawk have guns and other equipment included like radar and night vision but would they be included at all weather if it's sunny the pilots and people on board can clearly see what's going on with a bird eye view if it's rainy they're going to have to have a harder time seeing what's going down on land if it's rainy, with lightning and thunder, there's going to be a very limited visibility rate. There could be a chance of hitting the helo. Would it cause a fire, no damage, electrical failure, electrocution, etc.? Could they still deploy troops to the drop zone safely or with damage already taken? They could also choose to use them. If snowing, would the helos have some kind of white camo to reduce their presence or stay the same? If it's foggy, visibility range will be reduced depending on how much fog has accumulated. Will they use some kind of gray camo? Will they use the helicopters at all camouflage as i said before there could be camouflage implemented into the game depending on the weather and environment white camel for snow or snowy environments number 10 gray camel for foggy weather number 11 green and brown camel for jungle forest environments 12 controls 13 what will the controls be like in trying to control the helo they have to control the helo fire guns look at the radar activate flares dodge enemy fire control speed and altitude etc the pilot would need some form of free view you. They would also need to communicate with the troops. Uh, troops? I think you mean SWAT units? And I don't know. Okay, hold on. I'll, 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 I'll voice my concerns later. When they could get off, they would also need to communicate with the co pilot, if there is one, and HQ about the progress. Pilots, pilots should be required to use a mic if they want to control a helo. 14. Passengers would need some way to get out, for example, door opening, dropping with a row parachute or just jumping off with nothing depending on altitude there are also side guns so troops could take control of what they choose to uh what the f
15 cockpits, how visible will the cockpits look like, and how realistic would it be in night maps? Will they include light controls to make it more visible? Interior behind the cockpit is the spot where the troops are usually located. Will there be seats added? Will there be a sight gun included? How much space will there be for the troops to move around? 17 armor, how much will the armor be implemented into the helos? Will there be certain weak points? Will the glass be bulletproof? How will different weapons affect the armor once hit? 18. Other mechanic features. How will features and mechanics like flares, door opening, smoke and fire, engine failure, broken rotors, explosions, etc. work out? Will there be a fire extinguisher on board, etc.? Will troops be knocked out or killed instantly? Will they have to jump out before their death or before their helo crashes? What do you guys think about this topic? Oh well, I man, you're asking the death, but to me it's like, what? This sounds like a military force. Let's see what the developer has to say. There will be helicopters, but you won't be able to control them or use them for recon since a majority of our levels are indoors. Exactly. And then somebody replies to him saying, I'm guessing it's an entrance similar to SWAT 4 where you would drop up out of a heli onto a roof or building correct. And the developer replies to that saying, more than likely we'll have a helicopter hovering at the main door with a ram. <laughs> Sarcasm. Helicopter with a ram? An appropriately sized pistol. Totally, helicopter entry teams are all the rage these days. God damn it, dude. Like, sometimes I can't tell if they're being real or fucking around. But there you have it. Uh, that, that was a ridiculous amount of dialogue just for something that's not even in the game. God, I feel bad for you. <laughs> Um, next we have question to the devs about how the game works okay devs i am so hyped for this game and i was wondering how does the multiplayer play out is it pvp or pve and what game modes are there hope you find hope you find the time to answer and the dev responds with from the faq what gameplay modes will ron have and he basically posts something from one of the faqs that are already sitting at the front so so that people can read ron will include multiplayer co-op and pvp game modes co-op involves you and your friends playing against ai while you progress through the single player story while multiplayer involves you and your friends playing against another group of players currently there are three multiplayer game modes being tested barricaded suspects tdm vip escort and bomb defusal mode the doors open nonetheless for other challenges based on fan feedback interesting moving on to the next one i have a couple of questions what are the two versions of the game will there be weapon skins realistic skins of course will the game be pay to win will there be a ranking system for multiplayer and the developer replies with i'll answer this quickly just because it looks like you missed the ama by a minute there's a version of ready or not and only one there will be some skins 100 percent of them realistic and more than likely to be used there will also be some entirely different weapon models which don't affect anything but aesthetic game will never be pay to win thank goodness we're looking at a ranking system but it depends on how much the multiplayer kicks off mm, pretty cool I'll uh, push on to the next one. Up next we have, I missed the AMA, but I still have a few questions. Will the AI be able to see your flashlight? Will there be traps, tripwire, grenades, stove oven, leaking gas, automatic doors, lights that give away your position? Is there a level of static or will the defenders work against you if you take too long or take out members of their team? They could still block pathways, set up traps, or even kill hostages if you don't meet their demands. How realistic is their armor? How realistic will their armor be? In a lot of games, first shot against steel, plate armor will damage your health and the armor will completely degrade after a few shots how will environmental effects like dust from bullet impact explosions affect you inhaling without a mask could make you cough giving away your position and affecting your aim will we be able to turn off or shoot out lights we already know that bullets are affected if hitting something but will there be shrapnel will we be able to cut power lines to the building useful if you have night vision but potentially dangerous if hostages are involved and the developer replies with AI can detect light sources and stuff. Yeah, there will be traps, but nothing you can't detect and then anticipate. So there won't be so there won't be an oven with running gas waiting to explode. Armor will be realistic. We simulate the plates as well as Kevlar carrier itself. Sappies have tolerance. You'll be able to cut the power. And that's all they have to say about that. Moving on to the next one. Up next we have gore so i heard about the total body destruction so will this gore be next level never before seen in a modern video game and also will it be unrealistic not enough gore or an outrageous amount such as pistol shot taking someone's arm off or realistic somebody in the comments replies if there is grenades or some sort of explosive device will shrapnel be rendered 
and the developer says, if we had frag grenades, we would, but there aren't any ready or not. Gore will be realistic, by the way, not a lot in the way of dismemberment most of the time, but definitely a lot of cavitation and effects that cause stuff to look misshapen, if that makes sense. Most of our really visceral detail goes into headshots, since that's where IRL, most of the deformation happens. Mm, just imagine that. That sounds cool. Moving on to the next one. Up next, we have internships at Void. Hey, I am a college student looking around for internship jobs. I could not find anywhere on the Void website that said anything about such opportunities, as I couldn't find anyone to reach out to on the subject. On the Void website, I figure I might I figure I might as well ask on the sub. If there is a form that I didn't see, I'd love to be able to apply. And the developer replies with, what do you do? The same guy replies with, modeling, data science, code, can't PM me with specifics? And the developer says, go for it. You know, it's always great to have new developers to the team. Assets, you know, we need assets. Assets. Up next, we have one more rather very important question. So from what I heard, this game is meant to kind of be a comeback from the SWAT series. And one of the features that I loved was how you could press a key. It was like a page up, down, I think. And you could see from your teammate's perspective and sniper perspective, will this still be a thing? And the developer replies with, similar, similar, but you actually have to pull out a tablet to view your teammate's head cams now. It's not a part of the HUD. So wait, is he saying that you have to actually pull out like a mini tablet, like in game to actually look at your friendly's camera? That's interesting. And somebody replies with, that is very interesting and a more realistic reports to SWAT 4. Is it possible to move while holding this tablet? Does the tablet go full screen or will it just have a one person model with a screen on it? Yeah, you can move as normal. It's held in your hand as a physical object. That sounds really cool. Moving on to the next one. We've got give voip some love please consider adding position based voip as in you can hear your buddies only on certain distance and you hear the detection of speaker here's why i think it's necessary it helps your orientation in game if you can hear your teammate say follow me and you hear where he is cqb is based among other things on a constant communication and this is impossible if you have two teams clearing out different whispers if you have two teams clearing out different floors and everyone is trying to talk at the same time oh i know the feeling this was a nightmare and swap four we had to do separate ts channels with whispers to each other which as you guess wasn't perfect i know i'm an arm ahead but try looking at super popular mods of acre and tafar they both add position based voip alongside with the radio which adds more nice clicks and distortion while talking let's see what the developer has to say doing my best in this space we understand what good communication tools in the game can do for the fun and coordination factor you can expect positional voip we would love to add a quick way to chat to different voice groups similar to arma or just local squad and team for example but it's to be looked at still Moving on to the next one, we have environmental destruction, mainly light sources. How far will you go with it? There's been a couple of games that advertise these features but did not expand on them or ignored them completely. An example would be Killing Floor 2. So my main question is, will you be able to destroy all the light sources in the map, whether by using stun grenades or gunfire, and make rooms pitch dark if there is no light sources, visible or within radius? I know that it is one of those features that has been promised, but if Killing Floor 2 promised it and failed to deliver, I really want to know if you guys are for sure doing this, as I really hate shooting a lamp, light bulb, and other light sources just to see it doesn't go out and are completely indestructible. One slightly off topic question, but will the environmental destruction stay in each PvP round or be reset? In SWAT 4, each round will have all breached doors, staying breached, making wedges completely useless to stop the VIP at the exit until you reset the map. Thanks and I hope to hear your answer soon. And the developer replies with, we know you'd hate shooting a lamp only to see it stay lit, but you probably hate getting 5 FPS too. So what's a balancing act? of what lights are dynamic and thus breakable and what lights are baked we've done a lot of research on this topic and i think you guys are going to be happy with the results and somebody replies with light map swapping and the developer replies to that saying you can't do that for individual lights map load times would explode for over light moods it's the plan all right cool moving on to the next one we have adjust price for currency on steam please Hi, so Steam allows publishers to adjust price for giving currency. As we all know, $39 does not equal 39 euros, and so on. Please use option to adjust even for lesser currencies. I myself am from Poland, and 39 US dollars converted for PLN is a little bit too much for a game. It's around 141 PLN, and that price corresponds rather to Electronic Arts Ubisoft premieres than prices of normal games on Steam. Example, Witcher 3 $39.99 adjusted to 99 
in PLN, but not 140. I just wanted to bring your attention to this feature on Steam. As some devs pubs forget to do this, and either game is unavailable in some currencies, or its price is batshit crazy. Best regards, uh, that person will, that will not be shown. And the developer replies with, We will look into this once we start to sell on Steam, provided people can't just flip the key they get and sell it elsewhere. Does CDPR region lock their codes? And someone replies with, When I last looked at purchasing out of region Steam keys, they did seem to be region locked. Definitely double check this. Moving on to the next one. We have any further background pics? And he shows a picture of his desktop, but it has a ready or not background. And the developer replies with, Deadblock 3 has a few new ones. Somebody had asked, Can we please get a small screenshot to hold us over until the trailer for background purposes and all? And the developer replies with, Nope. Nah. Moving on to the next one, we have a trailer in the wake of E3. Hi devs, I heard some rumblings that there would be a more in-depth trailer post E3. Do you have a potential timeline on that? I can't wait to see more of the game, thanks. And Easy Street basically posts a post that was on uh, the AMA, which says that they're gonna have it out in July. Which is like, damn it, I don't know if I'm gonna be there for that. Moving on to the next one. Devs. Please consider using this as a team marksman rifle. And it shows a very... I'm not sure what kind of weapon that is. Can somebody tell me in the comments? I don't know what what this is. And the developer replies with, Likely the main weapon of the SWAT sniper. Moving on to the next one. No prone? I, for some reason, this part of the text is lit up. But if you get the mouse and you hover over it, you can see what he says. Um, it says, I'm very excited for this game. I can't wait for the game to come out, but not being able to prone is kind of disappointing. I know that it can prevent camping, but I think we should be able to go prone. Also, I'm disappointed that there is no melee as well. What do you guys think? And the developer replies with, it's very, very, very unlikely in any of our environments that you will ever need to go prone. We do have a state in the dynamic lean system where players can go into a very low duck if you need to get low quickly. Also handy for looking under beds. Oh shit, you can look under beds. Cool. Up next we have, do you need a translator? I can translate the game in the French language if you need to. And the developer replies with, plans to release a French localization with launch, so we're good. Okay, moving on to the next one. When the Steam page gonna pop up, then I can put it on my wish list, and some of my friends can see what the game's about, etc. And the developer replies with, Oh, it's there. Just hiding. While we dress it up, definitely happening in a month or so. Is this information about pre-order in July still actual? And then he has a picture of it saying pre-order in July. And the developer just says, it's the aim indeed. Up next we got Steam Summer Sale. So the Steam Summer Sale is speculated to be live until the 5th of July. Will Ron be live on Steam before the end of the Steam Sale? Or doesn't it go live on sale? I know Ron will be live on Steam in July with a discount, but still asking for the sale should be awesome thanks in advance somebody says in the comments while i understand where this comes from lower the price higher the demand but there's no reason to make a discount on a game that hasn't come out yet and the developer replies with while true Please keep in mind, Ready or Not is not a $20 game. Not for what we're providing. Up next we have, can this sub move away from the Siege hate circle jerk? I know that Siege wasn't a tactical renewal many of you were looking for, and I know that for others, Siege has moved further away from the Pursuto tactical gameplay it started with, but can we as a sub please stop circle jerking over hating Siege? That game is almost three years old at this point, and yes, it's not the next SWAT game, but it is its own damn thing, and in no way affecting Ron. I don't see why this sub can't just enjoy the progress for this game in hopes that it becomes the next true tactical shooter. Besides, I fear that if all this fan base gets known for hating Siege, that it will severely hurt the chance of widening the audience to this game. Please, let's just enjoy what this game will be and not fixate over what Siege isn't, as this is the Ready or Not subreddit, not the Siege is shit subreddit. I mean, I don't understand why people keep comparing Rainbow Six Siege to Ready or Not, like the two games are inherently, like they have nothing in common, like they just, um, they just need to stop comparing it. This is why I said at the beginning, don't compare Rainbow Six Siege to Ready or Not because they have nothing in common. So I don't see why people are shitting on Siege when, I mean, to be fair, Rainbow Six Siege is is a good game in its own right, but it's just not a tactical game. But we can't really compare these two games when they're not even comparable. So yeah, let's see what the developer has to say. 
I agree with the sentiment personally. Liking Siege and liking Ready or Not are not two mutually exclusive things. You do not need to hate Siege to like Ready or Not, and I would much rather have our game stand on its own two legs than be defined as being not Siege. Very valid point. Up next we have what I hope one of the skins for the M4 is. And it shows a picture of like a guy. Just, <laughs> just, just a regular M4 it looks like. And somebody in the comments just says, Robert De Niro firing a Colt Model 733 from the movie Heat. It was a decent AR in Payday 2, but I hope it makes an appearance in Ron with a 20 rounder. And the developer says, love it. And that ought to do it for, and that ought to do it boys and girls. I hope you liked the video. Be sure to uh, subscribe and do all the fancy stuff that every YouTuber tells you to do. And I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye